This is about to be the best alight motion tutorial for beginners on in this channel. I bet after watching this video, you're gonna say to your CapCut app, you are cooked, man. In my last alight motion tutorial, I told, if the video got 2.5K likes, I will make a video about how to use graph on a light motion. But guess what? It got 5.9K likes, but I thought before you started using graph, you should know a light motion basics, so I made this video. A lot of people think a light motion is crazy complicated, like it's the after effects of mobile editing. But honestly, it's easy as hell. You just need to understand what every icons and value work for, and once you get that, it's nothing. So before you say you sucks at edit, let's start the video. All right, here's what the first interface looks like. First, you'll see the tutorial icon. If you ever get lost, you can learn from there. Then there's projects. This is where all your edits live. And next is templates projects. Now, to start a new project, tap the plus icon. Pick your aspect ratio or make a custom one. Set your resolution, frame rate, and background. Name your project and hit create. Boom. Now we are in our project. Here, you will see another plus icon tap on it. You'll get basic add-ons like shapes, media, audio, and templates. On the other side, you've got tools like text and vector drawing. This thing is a little more advanced. To add text, tap text, type whatever you need. Then at the top left, you'll find alignment options, font, size, and color palettes. You can choose accordingly. Let's add a shape real quick. Now you don't have to swipe through menus like in CapCut. Everything's right here in one frame. Here you see lots of tools, let's talk about all. Start with this three icons. So with this first icon, let you cut and delete any layer to the left of your clip like this. And with this one, it let you cut and delete clips on the right side, and the middle one just splits without deleting anything. Then next we've got the speed control icon to slow down or speed up your clip, like this. Next, the color and gradient option. You can change the color of your shape or make a gradient background. Then come to move and transform. On your right side, with this here, you'll see a big space to move your layers like this. Second is rotates them. Third zooms in or out. And fourth one, useless. Okay, I have added another shape here just to show you more stuff. Next with this option, you can add stroke, border, and shadow. Adjust opacity, size, and angles however you like. Then comes blending and opacity settings, which every editing app has. What I'm gonna say about it. After that, you've got shape adjustments. You can change your shape's dimensions, numbers. And right below, you'll see presets. These are saved settings you can import from others. Now the best part, effects. This is where your edit starts looking W. As you can see, effects are neatly organized in columns. Color-related effects, 3D effects, move and transform effects, and animation effects. So if you don't know which effect for what, just check the category and you'll find out. Okay, let's add a simple motion effect on this shape, then I will show how to add keyframes on it. To remove an effect, just swipe left or right, and if you want to temporarily hide it, tap the eye icon. Now for keyframes, go to Move and Transform. Unlike CapCut, this gives you way more control. You can add multiple keyframes on one clip. To move this shape, just add keyframes like this.
Now, if you want to make it spin, go to rotate, add a keyframe at the start and one at the end. Double down the rotation value. And as you can see, I added motion blur because of this. Without it, the animation look off. You can even add graphs to make your motion smoother. And if you want to make the animation shorter, you don't need to delete and add keyframes again. Just drag them closer. Or use this icon which you will find under the speed section to move both your clip and keyframes at once. Alright, let's talk about some quick features that can save your workflow time. Say you've got two layers, one short and one long, and you want to move the short one to the end. On this case, tap this icon, and it'll take it right to where your playhead is. If you want to stretch a clip's length, tap this icon. Another shortcut. These arrows let you move your action line to last frame to the first, making sure there's no gap between layers. Next is for beat markers. Since there's no auto beat detection in a light motion, you gotta mark them manually by tapping the timeline like this. Last thing, layer management. If your project's lagging, hide layers with the eye icon. Long press to select multiple layers and merge them by tapping the top right icon. You can also mask layers with these two. And that's pretty much the essentials in a light motion. Well, I know a light motion is still hard to understand for the beginners. And CapCut, everything is pro even export settings. And on the middle hand from these two, you got Filmora, which is like the best and stable editor for now. I think you should try it too. It's easier than a light motion and it has all features which is CapCut has. You can check out my description for Filmora and give it a try. Anyways, this is for the video. Next video gonna be a banger. Till then, peace.